Hey guys, welcome back to the Hunter Pace Podcast. What do Maverick Hunters do when they're not hunting Mavericks? They go back to the base, recharge, and shoot the shit. And I'm in a different kind of base today. Once again, I'm your regular host, Zero Master. I'm here at the Peterborough Innovation Cluster with uh, the, um, what did I say, CEO or president, president and co-founder. President and co-founder of uh, Connect Play, Mr. David Winter. Thanks for having Hi me. Hi there. How's it going? Good, good. So um, I've got questions from both the community and questions that I've prepared as well from my website about the game. First off, I guess we should say um, the game that you're developing, uh, Maximum Football 2018. That's right. the current game yep. you're developing. And you developed other games before, such right. as Canadian Football 2017 yep. from last year. From last year. And the Maximum Football brand has gone back to 2005 when it was yeah. PC only. Um, and outside of my own gaming, I've, I've done work for some... I've worked for large studios and really small ones. Oh, okay. Yeah. So I spent some time at Electronic Arts and uh, HB Studios and Warner Brothers and... Uh, a publishing company in Montreal and so but yeah I've done really big studios of thousands of people and really right. small studios of two. Oh, okay <laughs> gotcha so um so uh, I guess the first question I have is uh based on your experience what's different be doing it the indie route rather than working for a major studio well the there are two big differences one an indie studio just doesn't have the funding of a big AAA mm -hmm. studio so you're always you're always trying to figure out what you can do with limited resources. But at the same time, you're free to do what you like. Uh, working at EA, there are a lot of, there's a lot of politics there and everybody's trying to have their way and you get right. a lot of cooks in the kitchen and that sort of thing. Whereas an indie, as an indie developer, you make your decisions. Mm -hmm. So there's, there's less politics because you're the only one politicking. Right. Do you, do you do you prefer the freedom of being your own developer rather than going to like a nine to five or whatever the crazy hours are? For a yeah, studio? I think I prefer it myself. Yeah. I mean, it's it's not nine to five. It's never nine to five, but um, I can make a decision and just move forward with it. I yeah. don't have to go through um, a, you know days and weeks of trying to convince people it's the right idea. Mm -hmm. If I make a decision, I just do it. It's one of the reasons why features get done quickly right right yeah. i've heard also like uh like horror stories from like uh big end developers like yes. working crazy hours some people yeah. talking about working you know 13 hour days seven yeah. days a week yeah. stuff like that so yeah. have you ever had to deal with anything like that yes when you were in that? Yeah. yeah uh so i did that when i was there but i also do that now okay um a, a game that is the size of maximum football mm -hmm. when you've got tiny team of just a couple of people myself and the contractor on and off mm -hmm. as, as required you cannot do that nine to five. Right. So, you know, my, my days are eight until sometime when I get home late at night, mm -hmm. uh, working weekends, that sort of thing. Mm -hmm. So it's not a, uh, it's not a part-time gig. It's, it's more than full-time. So right. Right. Gotcha. It's, it's almost two full-time jobs. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So, um, specifically, uh, I wanted to talk about, uh, last year you released, uh, Canadian football 2017. Yep. Uh, and it's whole, point was to promote the canadian side yes. of football um now in maximum football it sounds like you've gone to more towards american football is that right no or? well not really um canadian football is still the focus of okay. maximum football it is still when you start the game for the very first time it's in canadian football mode okay. it's using the canadian teams and the canadian right. cities uh but you do have two other rule options to choose from you okay. can you can go into the settings and flip it over to American Pro, okay. so it's very similar to what you see on Fox on Sunday afternoons, mm -hmm. or you can flip it over to U.S. College Football, mm -hmm. so it will use all of the rule sets of U.S. College Football, the, the field size, 11 men, no two-minute warning, you know, yeah. the, the penalty rules and that mm -hmm. sort of thing. So it's, it's now simulates the rule sets of three different styles okay. of football. Yeah, yeah and, th and that's kind of what I was thinking of, because... Um, a lot of uh, people I talk to who are football fans are not as keen on CFL's rules as mm -hmm. their NFL's rules. So, uh, like, I was wondering, like, um, are you more pointing towards doing like a like a three downs or like a four downs kind of system, or do you, are you making it so like the player can decide which rule set they want to use? The player decides which rule set they want okay. to use. If they if they go into uh, if they go into the settings and switch it over to US Pro. Mm -hmm. Uh, they will get 
uh, they will get the vast majority of the rules that they're expecting. Mm -hmm. 11 men, four downs, 100 yard field, you know, fair catch, all that stuff. Mm -hmm. So it'll be a far more familiar rule set for those folks that are more interested in the American game. Okay. okay um, gotcha. But for the fans that, that are looking for the Canadian experience, it's, it's all there as well. Okay. So, um, so a question from one of the uh, community members from our site is, Game Football 2017 added U.S. style 11 on 11 play, and uh, how far in maximum football will that make it? Is it just a rule set, or will it be something that uh, will allow something customized on a game by game basis? Uh, well, it's the rule set is there. Plus, mm -hmm. you also have multiple league sizes to mm -hmm. choose from now. Right. So, in in Canadian Football 17, you had nine teams. That was that was it. You had no you had nine teams and no ability to change them. Okay. Uh, maximum Football 18 has three league sizes. There's a nine oh, okay. team, there's a 10 team, and there's a 16 team. Uh, the nine and 10 are all Canadian cities. The 16 are all US cities, right. but they're completely customizable. So you can change the city from Halifax to Boston if you want. Um, so there's, there's really just league sizes with, with pre-made team names, but there's nothing to prevent you from changing those if you want to. Is there, is there like intermixing? Can you have a US team play a Canadian team? Sure. Yeah, oh, okay. you just you just change the name of the city, and if you want New York to play Winnipeg, you just pick the league size and say, "I want this team to be Winnipeg," and there it is. Yeah. Okay. So one other thing I wanted to ask you about is, with no licensing from CFL or NFL, how much inspiration is drawn from real teams and stadiums, and how much is purely just made up? Well, the player names are all randomly generated. I have a oh, list okay. of about uh, I think it's ten thousand surnames, and it mm -hmm. came from Stats Canada. And so it's the 10,000 most common surnames in the mm -hmm. country. And as the players are being generated, it just randomly picked first names and last names from the list and generated a little uh, biography of player height and weight and okay. assigned them position. So all of that is randomly generated. Cool. And again, with the game, you can go in and change those mm -hmm. things. So if you want to change the name of your quarterback, you can do that. Um, the The stadiums are are reminiscent of real world stadiums, but I've made a lot of changes to them. So they're not exact replicas. We can't do exact replicas, but um, certainly when you are in, um, like for example, Saskatchewan has a brand new stadium right. and the stadium that's in the game looks kind of sort of like it, but it's missing an entire deck, right? you know, and the layout of the seats is different and the coloring is mm -hmm. different and the skyline is different and that sort of yeah. thing. So you know, even the roof style has changed quite a bit. Um, so it's it's reminiscent, but they're not exact copies. Okay. So going back to uh, the players and the random generation, is that is it different every time you play, or no. is it no? They're they're okay. set rosters. So I randomly generated them, and and you have some stock rosters that have been balanced okay. and tested, um, and then you can go in to the editors in the game and change them if you okay. want. Okay. And it remembers them. And if you if you get to a point where you've you've made a mistake somewhere along the line, or you just want to go back to defaults, there's a button that you just press the button, and it takes you right back to the defaults that ship with the okay. game, and you can restart. So, um, yeah, they're they're there for having something to start with. Mm -hmm. yeah. Okay, yeah, that's good because uh, I've uh, I played a couple of NES baseball games that you made. If you made a decision, you kind of have to stick to it, and. Yeah. Uh, Sometimes you don't always make the smartest decision yeah. if you're stuck. So. Well, this one is um, this one is a reset. It will reset the whole thing. I mean, if you make one roster mistake, you're and you reset, you're resetting the whole thing. Mm -hmm. um, so try not to make too many mistakes. <laughs> uh, but you know, at least it gives you an out. Right, right. That's good. Um, uh, what <clears throat> speaking of just um, this uh, other games, I wanted to ask you what. Um, what games, football or not, inspired the design of the game? Well, I don't know. Um, I guess this is something that I've always wanted to do. So there's a lot that is inspired by just my own ideas. Mm -hmm. I mean, the concept of being able to play multiple rule sets under one title right. is something that I introduced to the world back in 2005. Um, no game has still there's still not been another football game to do that mm -hmm. maximum football is the only one yeah. to ever have done that i mean there's nhl games that'll do it but there's like, nhl there's games but they're they're not as drastic a change yeah you know the ice the ice size changes from mm -hmm. european to north american and there are some other rules like you may take the blue line away 
Um, but when it comes to football, the rule changes are so dramatic that mm -hmm. it is a big, big difference. I mean, right. changing from 11 to 12, all, all your plays are different. Changing from four downs to three, well, all your AI, coaching AI is different. You know, your field size, all that stuff is different. Um, so even some of the clock rules, you know, in, in college football, you don't have a two minute warning. So yeah. you don't have that extra timeout, uh, clock stoppage timeout. Right. Um, so, you know, there are hockey games that have multiple rule sets, mm -hmm. but I don't think the rule changes between those types of hockey are as dramatic as they are in football. Yeah, it's, it's very minor. For one thing I noticed, and I don't, I don't play it a ton, but my, my brother's big into NHL, uh, 16. Um, you can make an OHL team play like a, play like a farm team from the States. Yeah. Um, and I think the rule change is very minor just so that it equals out. Yeah. So, I mean, you can have an OHL team play an NHL team and I think it just picks the rule set that makes the most sense. Yeah. Um, and, and I, I, I'm not a big one for soccer. I don't spend a lot of time with soccer games, but I, I do think that the, I do think that the soccer games that are licensed allow you to play MLS team against a Premier League team, which I, I think would not be close, but <laughs> mm -hmm. but um, I, I think that they allow you to do that. But again, I mean, it's it's just about the same game with different level of player. Right, right. So I have a question actually from my dad because he doesn't play games anymore, but he's a big football fan, right. big NFL fan. Uh, he had a question about. Um, can uh is there uh can coaches challenge a play and is the a is it ai based or can a player do that there is no challenging this there's year. no challenging okay. yeah there's no challenging this year we need i need to spend more time adding in the things that you could challenge and refining right refining the the animation so that it could be overturnable um right now if you were to say challenge pass interference um it there, there, there's not enough finite definition in the animations for you to make a decision one way or another. So adding challenges is something that I'll probably get to next year. Oh, okay. So it's something you've considered. Yes. It's just like yeah. a lot of programming. There's, there's, that. there's a, to make challenges something that you could overturn mm -hmm. uh, and also give the AI cues to overturn it. Mm -hmm. um, yeah, that's, that's a, that's a big chunk of, of, of effort. So yeah. something for next year. Yeah, I can imagine. Um, so I, um, one other thing that you mentioned in some of your more recent videos is DPC. Right. Um, I think it's an interesting feature, um, but I want to know, does it go beyond just player cards and dossiers or are some of those characters, will they ever be player playable in the game? Like any of those players? Or? Well, like I said, you can edit the players however you want. Mm -hmm. So you could, if you are in the DPC roster and you have your, your little player card at the top of the screen with your picture, um, you can go in there and add yourself. To the game. I mean, I've put myself in the game mm -hmm. running around as the quarterback for Saskatchewan. <laughs> um, but um, so we don't have the rosters for those players because we didn't get enough players sending the waivers in for right. us to flesh out an entire league. Okay. So we, we just this year we decided, well, we'll just do it with the player cards. And, and if we get more, uh, more response from the actual athletes next year, we can look at doing that. Mm hmm. Uh, so is it something that like in the future, like there, if there's enough, there might be like an option, like if you bring up the, the, the cards that they could say like a button to add to team or something like yeah, that. Yeah, we could do something like that. Sure. Yeah. Cause that's really cool. I thought that was a really cool feature that you're adding yeah. to the game, the player cards. Well, I, I think it gives athletes, young athletes, and these are young athletes. I mean, some of these guys are eight, nine, 10 mm -hmm. years old. They're quite young. Um, the biggest challenge with with doing this sort of feature is getting the legal waiver signed by right. the parent or guardian so everybody that is in the game i have a legal document from their parent or guardian right. saying yes i understand my son's picture is going to be in a video game and it's okay yeah um yeah. and so that was the biggest hurdle for this yeah. and getting photos that we could use some of them i some of them i've asked to send me a new picture because yeah this is probably not a good picture <laughs> <laughs> yeah because i don't know about you if i was like 12 and i knew that i was going to be in a game i'd be telling all my friends yeah. be like, go buy this game yeah and so, so it's uh it's a it's an interesting experiment we're working with a company out of toronto called blue phoenix yeah and um they work with various uh canadian and american football combine groups 
And so they have access to player databases that thousands and thousands of players. Um, but it's all about getting that waiver. So, mm -hmm. yeah. So um, I have, I did look into some of the history of the games as well as the Steam and Xbox release of uh, Chain Football 2017. And uh, there's a, there's quite a few mixed reviews on the yeah, game. Yeah, it, it's mixed reviews. <laughs> yeah. um, when we launched the game in July of last year, uh, it was a little bit of a surprise because my idea of football is the long drive moving down the field mm -hmm. with, you know, five or six, seven, 12 yeah. plays methodically moving down the field. And, and when we had our launch tournament over in retros here in Peterborough mm -hmm. and people were playing the game, every pass they threw was a 60 yard bomb down the field. They're <laughs> trying to score on every single play <laughs> and um, just, that's not how football works. Yeah. And so it became frustrating because the passing system was set up for statistical accuracy to real life football. To me, that's what simulation yeah. football is. Mm -hmm. You are creating a game that uses real rules and comes up with something that's a reasonable approximation mm -hmm. in terms of statistics of real football. Right. Um, if you're completing 60 yard passes on every single play, that's mm -hmm. not simulation football. Yeah, that's, that's, that's arcade. Yeah. And um so it was it was a case of okay, this pass was dropped because statistically it should not be a completion to yeah. maintain that con that statistical accuracy of the game. Exactly. So there was there was too much complexity put into the pass receptions being completed based on math as opposed to the ball hit the guy in the hands, right? Yeah. So that has been changed around. Mm -hmm. In fact, uh, this is, I guess, a good segue. Um, just about everything in terms of maximum football 18 is different from 17. Yeah. Um, everything from the player locomotion, from how they move from point A to point B is completely new code. Um, last year, when the, last year you'd occasionally see players bump into each other and kind of get stuck because mm -hmm. they couldn't get around each other. Yeah. Well, that whole routine has been changed. So now they go around each other properly. Um, they maintain distance better, so there's more separation between the players. Um, the running and the cutting is more is is far smoother, so they don't um, the 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 user movement is smoother and faster mm -hmm. reaction. Um, the passing system is completely different. The tackling system has been redone. There's so much different from what was there last year that you know part of the challenge is going to get is going to go back to the people that bought 17 and say, mm -hmm. yeah, but this is a different game. Yeah. Yeah. Um, and that, that's kind of a good segue because my next question was going to be like taking that uh, criticism, like a lot of stuff people be like, you know, say, you know, it's glitchy or, or something else. Like it's, it doesn't feel like real football. Yeah. I, I, it sounds like you've taken a lot of that criticism and tried to use it to improve the next. Yeah. We're trying to get closer to what people are looking for. I mean, Simulation football means different things to different people. Right. Uh, for me, simulation football just means it uses the correct rules mm -hmm. and it comes pretty close to spitting out statistics that are correct, mm -hmm. plus or minus some yeah. value. Um, for other people, they want you know molecular level accuracy to yeah. the simulation, and that I just don't think I can yeah. do that, and I don't think anybody's mm -hmm. going to do that. Um, but you're trying to you know they want to see uh, players, uh, moving in a, in a, in a realistic fashion, but, mm -hmm. but, uh, I also have to make sure that players are moving in a fashion that makes sure that they're in the right place to do the right, right thing at the right time. Right. Um, exactly. trying to come up with all those animations and, and, uh, inverse kinematic mathematics to put players in the right place and keep it realistic is, is a little bit of a challenge, especially for a small team. Yeah. So, um, simulation football, I kind of, draw the line at yes it uses the real rules and it's uh it comes up with stats that are pretty close but at the same time i did try to add more uh, uh add more control to the user so if they throw a pass it's completed based on them completing a pass as opposed to the stats saying yeah. that it was completed so you end up now with scores that are a bit higher and and uh statistics are that are not quite in line mm -hmm. with real world football but uh based on the feedback that i was getting from 17 
this is what people are looking for. Yeah. So they're less concerned about statistical accuracy mm -hmm. and wanting to throw a 60 yard pass. <laughs> yeah. And that actually leads into another yeah. question I have is because um, obviously Madden is a huge franchise. Yeah. Um, and uh, you and uh, competing it, like it's I would like it's competing at that against that might be an uphill battle. But what I might what I wanted to ask is, um, is there any uh, is there anything you would say to somebody who say who's the Madden fan who buys Madden every year or the guy who maybe buys a sports game once every five years to incentivize them to buy um, maximum football 2018 over that well, or even as a complimentary i i work on on madden my yeah. my name is on madden from 05 to 2009 oh, okay uh, i was the uh, producer for sports online right. at, at eac and so um i my name's on madden mm -hmm. at somewhere in i'm gonna have to bring my copy of madden yeah it's, it. <laughs> it's probably in there somewhere uh so I see a lot of issues with Madden. Mm -hmm. I don't, I mean, it's, it's a very good game, but I also see a lot of things that for a studio with that kind of resources, they should never have the problem where the field disappears. Yeah. You know, that should never happen. It, it, so I, I look at it and say, you know, if, if Madden, if, if EA did not have the NFL license, would Madden still be around? Mm -hmm. I don't know. Um, but I think what Maximum Football does is gives players an opportunity to try something a little different, where it's more of a sandbox. Um, you have different rule options you can play with. Uh, certainly for, say, the PS4, for example, uh, fans in Canada have not had an option to play their game on the PS4 mm -hmm. before, so now they can. And that's my main yeah. current-gen console. Yeah. Like I have access to an Xbox One, but PS4 is my console. So. Yeah, so now Canadian fans can play their game on a PS4. Mm -hmm. uh, if you're a fan of the college rules, you know this is the first time since, I think, 2013 mm -hmm. that you've had an option for playing college football rules. Yeah. Um, so now you can go and you can edit your teams and edit your uniforms and edit your players and do those things. Um, and I think I'm... I think Canuck Play is a little bit more responsive in terms of listening to mm -hmm. the user base than other studios mm -hmm. are. Um, but um, I think, you know, if, if you're looking for that, that slick NFL experience, then that's going, yeah. Madden's your option. Mm -hmm. Gotcha. Um, one thing that I did want to ask you about as well is because obviously the Unity engine didn't exist when you were making the original yeah. games. Well, it, in fact, it was released... The day after Unity 1.0 was released the day after Maximum Football 05 <laughs> came out. So, gotcha. <laughs> so, my main question with that is sometimes Unity gets a bad rep uh, yeah. because of, because uh, I mean, it is available to anyone. So, anyone can make a game. And thus, actually, yeah. one of our members, uh, uh, SCR, does an entire series called Fearless, where he picks uh, random free or cheap. Uh, horror games and then streams them and then does videos on yes, them. Yes, the asset so, flip games. Yeah, so uh, what I wanted to ask you was, is uh, is that uh, reputation affected the way that you design the game, or just based on, you know, what it was? Because Unity is great for a lot of things, too. Like, mm -hmm. I don't, I'm not a hundred, I'm not 100% in the programming spectrum anymore, uh, but I know, but I've heard that it's really good for porting games. Mm -hmm. uh, in terms of using other engines because of that. So, well, well, I don't know about that. I mean, I've not, I've not tried to take a game from unreal and turn it into unity. So, yeah. um, I chose unity based on it running the C sharp API hundred mm -hmm. percent. That is why I picked Unity. Yeah. C sharp is what I learned yeah. programming in college. For, so, so I think, you know, there's, there's this mindset that, Unreal has better graphics. Well, both are just graphic en engines. They mm -hmm. they draw to the screen whatever it is that you've told them to draw to the screen. Exactly. So if you're pumping up bad art on, to Unreal, mm -hmm. Unreal is going to show you a bad art on yeah. the screen. So you know, as terms of in terms of the graphics, both are are DirectX 11 and 12 based engines. Mm -hmm. um, they both have very sophisticated lighting systems. Um, they both have high performance uh, executors. Um, uh, a lot of people don't realize that uh, Unity has the ability to take your C sharp code and compile it to the same assembly that C would generate. Mm -hmm. 
it goes through a process called IL2 CPP, which okay. is uh, interpreted language to C++. Okay. And it goes through that, that translator that basically takes all the C sharp code and mm -hmm. translates it to C++ and mm -hmm. then compiles it with the Roslyn mm -hmm. uh, compiler. And so you end up with, with executable uh, speeds that are so close to C++ pure that they're indistinguishable. Yeah. And the reality is that these consoles are pretty high end machine now. I mean, you're not, they're not Commodore 64s. Yeah. So, mm -hmm. you know, your, your need to write things in pure assembly code and pure C++ is mm -hmm. kind of not really there anymore. Yeah. You can, you can write in the more efficient C sharp. Yeah. And that's why I picked unity is c sharp is a far more efficient language to develop in yeah and and i agree because i remember when i was uh learning c sharp and all and you know all the other programming layers we were learning i found that it was the it they started us off with it when mm -hmm. we were learning it because it's the easiest to manage mm -hmm. and it's the cleanest of all the programs like you have stuff like visual basic and mm -hmm. you stuff like you know javascript and and c plus plus and c that's us all great but like, you know, if you want to program something in JavaScript, it takes like 12 page, t pages more of code than it would do it in just in C sharp. Yeah. So yeah. Uh, it's something it's I, that's kind of neat that it's I didn't know. And I, and I know I've way. just offended every C++ purist out there. <laughs> it, uh, you know, I'm sure you get a lot of hate mail about that. But, um, you know, I this is 2018. I, mm -hmm. I don't see the point in dealing with header files. Yeah. And um, and uh, I also just wanted to. Uh, ask you about it like because there have been like really good like triple a games made in unity one so of the, it's one possible of the, one of the laura croft games was unity mm -hmm. i don't remember which one but and it it may not have been a console title but still i mean when you've got when you've got triple a studios mm -hmm. using unity for for their for their titles mm -hmm. you know why that's not a bad thing i, I think uh unity's Un unity has a marketing um has a little marketing tagline and they say something like it unity's in a billion applications or mm -hmm. something if you're in a billion if you're being used for a billion things you've you've, you've probably got a pretty yeah. good product there yeah exactly <laughs> i mean yeah it's it, it's just uh, a lot of because it's so available you know it's more likely people are going to make something and yeah know what it is yeah. exactly like and you, you said. do get a lot of games that are what are sort of referred to as asset flipping they mm -hmm. go to the asset store they spend 20 bucks they get a package of things and they Throw yeah. a game up on Steam, and mm -hmm. you can kind of see those. Mm -hmm. Maximum Football isn't one of those. <laughs> mm -hmm. um, there, uh, I'm trying to think of e even even though some of the tool sets uh, were purchased from the asset store, uh, I've gone and rewritten big chunks of them to make right. them more efficient and mm -hmm. to remove things that weren't required and to fix bugs and whatever else. So. Even though there are things in the title, like the the character physics for tackles is all physics based, well, that Unity has a, a plugin to do that sort of thing, but the plugin is not very efficient, and there's some bugs with it, and you know it it, it there's a lot of room for improvement. Right. So the nice thing about it is that you can go and you can make those improvements and rip out the stuff that you don't need and and streamline and make it more efficient. So. Um, I'm sure you can do that with Unreal, but Unity just seems to be easier to do that sort of thing. Right. Uh, and one thing I really appreciate about uh, what I've seen of Maximum Football 2018 is that there's more focus on gameplay than graphics. Because in the world we live in, everybody's like, got to have the prettiest graphics to. Yeah, I'm game. not a, I'm not a, uh, I'm not a subscriber to that. Mm -hmm. uh, I mean, you you just saw my workspace a little while ago, and you saw yeah. the Atari Twenty Six Hundred sitting on my on my <laughs> yeah. desk. So on top of on top of like on, a on dev top kit. of a PS Four Dev Kit, there's an Atari Twenty Six Hundred. <laughs> so um, I I prefer a game that's just fun over a pay, over a game that looks pretty. Yeah, uh, I will give Madden all the kudos in the world for a game that looks pretty. Yeah. But like I said, I mean they've got. They've got glitches where coaches are standing in the middle of the field, and yeah. and the field will disappear sometimes, and things like that. Or, or like the uh, the one of the big ones was the face recognition, and I can't remember which uh, basketball game it was, but it was like so broken that like sometimes you get like jumbled faces. Yeah, and stuff. I, I don't, I don't, I, I and, don't know about and, that. And but... a lot of the time, it's almost like there's uh, there's more focus on making the game look good to sell it than to yeah. you know QA. And I get like a lot of. There's a lot of commentary mm -hmm. and and I chalk it all up to just trolling. Mm -hmm. You know, you do 
you do see people in, in message board comments and whatever else saying this game looks like a PS2 title. Well, mm -hmm. from a, from a, from a, uh, what is being rendered to screen standpoint, a PS2 would explode if I mm -hmm. tried to put this stuff yeah. on a PS2. I mean, they didn't even have a concept of a vertex shader, yeah. so there's no 3D grass. On exactly. PS2. Uh, the physics engine that I use for player tackles yeah. would get two frames a second on a PS2. Yeah. Uh, so it's it, Madden is prettier, and there's mm -hmm. no denying that. Yeah. But I think uh, Maximum Football, in terms of the indie titles that mm -hmm. are that are out there and yeah. coming out there. Um, we have more Ma maximum football has multiple player model styles. Yeah. So, you know, your kicker does not look like your center. Right. Um, you know, there's different helmet types. There's different, uh, pardon me, different face mask types of the helmet. Mm -hmm. The helmet shells are all the same, but the face masks are mm -hmm. different. Um, and you know, along with the, the, um, the player editor, you can make your, your players look differently. Um, I think, uh, we've got 12 stadiums in the game plus a practice field, which is different. So 13, mm -hmm. I guess. Yeah. Um, and, uh, you know, they all have 3d crowds that are animated and cheering and whatever else. So, um, I think if you're looking for something that is, you know, bleeding edge graphics, mm -hmm. you know, maybe that's going to be a couple of years, right. but if and you're looking for something that's just a fun game to play with different alternatives for rules, mm -hmm. I think we're your option. And it seems to me whenever people mention like this looks like a PS2 game is like it seems to be like if it doesn't have bloom or the characters don't have sweat on their face, it's a PS2. Well, the thing like, is, yeah. um, Maximum Football does use bloom. Yeah. It does use a bloom mm -hmm. effect. It's just not in your face. Mm -hmm. um, there is this mindset in the gaming world that I see anyway that every effect, uh, be it uh, your, your uh, depth of field for cameras or mm -hmm. bloom effect or uh, ambient occlusion or all those fancy camera effects that give right. you more depth to your, to your screen. All those things seem to be cranked up to 10 mm -hmm. and they're overpowering. I mean, they don't mm -hmm. look real. Yeah. Um, I have all those things in maximum football. There's ambient mm -hmm. occlusion, there's bloom, there's depth of field, mm -hmm. all that stuff, yeah. but it's very toned down yeah. to be subtle. Mm -hmm. uh if you are if you are saying to yourself that effect looks really good then that effect was poorly done because you shouldn't notice it yeah exactly it's something you 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 take from the film mm -hmm. industry if a special effect stands out it's done badly mm -hmm. uh you shouldn't see a special effect it should be seamless and so what i see in a lot of gaming is is the designers and producers they they crank up all the effects to ten mm -hmm. so that they can say, hey, look, we've got this cool bloom effect. Yeah, yeah, but you shouldn't see it. Yeah, exactly. So, um, exactly. And I mean, it's not to say graphics are important. Like I remember when they first showed uh, when I first got my hands on Resident Evil Seven, I was like, this look like to me. I'm like, this looks as close to real as I've ever yeah, seen. Yeah, some and of it. Um, some of the the visuals. Um, um, uh, I'm trying to remember the name of the of the survival game um, that just came out a little while ago. Um, uh, the Last of Us. Last of Us. Yeah. Last of Us. Those faces and and the characters look just like their real life actor counterparts. Yeah. Um, so those those look fantastic. You also have to remember that they're the only one on screen. Mm -hmm. um, it's it's really. It's really not that much of a technical challenge to put yeah. one super lifelike character on screen at a time. Yeah. Well, like you put in a game shark and you yeah, get yeah. a camera cheat, you can see that there's like nothing behind them. Yeah. Kind of thing. And, you know, for a sports title, especially football mm -hmm. and especially Canadian football, mm -hmm. well, you've got 24 players on the field, plus you've got a hundred and some on the sidelines, plus you've got all the camera people and all that other stuff. So you've got more than just one really pretty looking character on the mm -hmm. screen. You've got a bunch of characters on the screen, all running around, all animating. Um, skinned mesh animation is always really tough on a processor. So um, it's, it's that fine line between having player characters that look fantastic and having them that can give you 60 frames a second. Right, right. Exactly. I want 60 frames a second. Mm -hmm. I'm not concerned if you can't see the, nose hair yeah, <laughs> yeah like I'm, I, I'm the same like it like it, the framing has to be solid before yeah. whatever and it's 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 become kind of a thing uh, in the gaming community like oh the game looks really great but it runs at 15 frames yeah yeah <laughs> you gotta I have want, a gtx titan to run the game yeah i want 60 frames a second mm -hmm. i was it used to be happy with 30 but then mm -hmm. when i found that you could get 60 that was my benchmark 
Yeah. And so, yeah, I would rather have 60 frames a second than worry about whether or not mm -hmm. I can see pimples. Right, exactly. Yeah. Now, another thing I want to talk, which may be graphics related, is that there's a weather system yep, in Maxwell Football. Yep. So I wanted to ask, is it, uh, is it, uh, do you have like things for, is it like snow, rain? Snow, rain, um, and nice. Nice, That's yeah. That's kind of the three. Yeah. And uh, it'll affect gameplay, yes, I assume? Yes, it does. Okay. Uh, so the snow is probably the most interesting one, uh, because when the game starts, when you enter the stadium and you get the camera pan and you're doing all the introduction, whatever else, coin toss, there's not a lot of snow on the field. You can see it's snowing, but there's only little bits and patches. But as the game progresses, the snow builds up and builds up and builds up, and it gets to the point where um, towards the end of the game, now you're, now you're running into trouble just seeing the yard lines because there's so much snow on the field. Uh, and as the snow accumulates, it does affect the player physics. Mm -hmm. So they, they can't turn as tightly. They can't run as fast. Uh, there are more chances for fumbles, that sort of thing. Mm -hmm. uh, when it comes to rain, um, it's, it's more of a harder to catch, harder to hold on to the ball, that type of thing. Um, and nice weather is, well, nice. Mm -hmm. Exactly. Um, is there anything like if it's a really hot day that some of the players might be more fatigued? No, I don't it? have anything for heat, but that's an mm -hmm. interesting idea to maybe add yeah. next year. Because I, I remember humidity. like, I remember like when, uh, uh, I can't remember if it was last year or when it was, but there was like a few NFL games where they were having a heat wave yeah. somewhere down in the south, and yeah. like you could see the players were just dying. Yeah, yeah. The, uh, so. A player, uh, a player can lose about uh, certainly a lineman can lose about ten or fifteen pounds mm -hmm. in some of those games. So yeah, cramping is an issue. Yeah, that's really neat. So um, another question from a member of our site, SCR, who's the uh, who's more of the sports uh, guy. I I play football. I know quite a bit about football, but if I tried to just give you football questions, I think I, you'd think I'm crazy. So uh, he helped out and gave another question, a few questions here. So uh, with the pre-motion hot route mechanic, just how many different routes can a receiver switch on a given play? Uh, well, a hot, if you're doing a hot route, if you, if you, to, you can reassign a player. Okay. And so if you line up the ball and you realize that the defense is doing something wonky, you can you can change the route of one of the players. Yeah. And for right now, for this year, for initial launch, uh, it basically does a hook. Okay. So you, if you, uh, on PS4, for example, if your triangle receiver uh, is supposed to do a fly or something like that, okay. you, can, you can reassign them to do a hook. And it'll run out about okay. five yards and just real quick. And that is to uh, help um, work against a blitz because it takes receivers that might be running long patterns and stop them short so that you can throw the ball faster. Um, so it's very, very, very simple. I mean, there's not a lot of picking route mechanics, that sort of thing. Um, as we go forward with the title and I bring back the play designer, the PC edition has a play designer because it's a mouse and a keyboard and right, you can design right. plays, you can draw plays. Mm -hmm. Consoles a bit doesn't more mm -hmm. difficult because it doesn't mm -hmm. have those things, but I've got a plan to bring the, the play designer onto the console. Okay. So once you have the play designer and you can have predefined routes, then assigning an actual different route type as a hot route will be something I'll be able to get to. Mm -hmm. So right now it's very simple. Yeah. You're reassigning from whatever he's supposed to be doing to a quick hook. Um, but as I go forward, I'm hoping to be able to have a chart of different routes mm -hmm. to assign. Do you, um, have you thought about using like the PlayStation 4's touchpad or just even an analog stick to do like mouse motions that you would do? Yeah, the, the trick is any, any input system that I design has to work on all platforms. Mm -hmm. So if I design something specifically for a touchpad, well, now I got to try and figure out how to make it work on an Xbox. Mm -hmm. So, sure. um, it is a case of trying to, uh, make it work for the lowest common denominator. Okay. and coming up with a unified process. And I completely understand that that sort of takes away functionality that PS4 players are looking for. But when you've got a small team and you're trying to keep a code base as consistent as possible to make it maintainable and, and buildable, um, branching off and supporting a whole bunch of different things is, is really difficult to maintain when you've got a small group. Gotcha. Have you had a chance to try uh, the new Xbox customizable controller that uh, has inputs for every button and allows, you know, um, 
people who are maybe don't have the best coordination because of disability or something play games. No, I've not. Yeah. I've not had a chance to look at that. Is that something you're interested in to, yeah. to incorporate? Sure. Yeah. yeah. If I, I, if I get a hold of one, and it's I'm it's like out. brand new technology. Oh. So I'm not surprised if you don't have yeah. one. Um, but uh, it's just something that I uh, I saw recently, and it's it changed the way that people can play games on PC or Xbox because. Mm-hmm. Um, people who normally wouldn't be able to play it because of the way they have to hold the controller and whatnot now can play games using different setups. Right. Like people who have uh, uh, MS or something like that, they want to play a game, they now have the ability to smite every single button. So, right. Um, that's something really cool. Something uh, maybe Xbox will send you one. Or yeah, something. maybe. Uh, <laughs> yeah, I, I could do that. We uh, Here at the Innovation Cluster, there is a... Um, there's a fellow named Simon who is responsible for working with companies creating um, accessibility products. Right. And so it would actually, given what that product is and given the environment here at the innovation cluster, it's probably something that would make sense. To yeah. Begin. Mm-hmm. yeah. Yeah, exactly. Um, I actually also, that segues. ways, I want to ask you, what's your relationship with Microsoft and Sony been like? Uh, well, um, I, I, I'm not sure what, maybe clarify. The like, question. um, when, cause the games recently got, uh, past the certification, the certification. Yeah. So what was that process like? Was there a lot of communication with them or was it, uh, well, both platforms are very different in how mm-hmm. they approach things. And both platforms have requirements mm-hmm. that the other may not necessarily have. Okay. Um, and I'm, I'm going to pick one, Mm -hmm. um, with the Xbox one, your controller has user replaceable batteries Mm -hmm. and they are more prone to die on you mid game than the Mm -hmm. PS4. It's just a thing. Mm -hmm. Uh, and so Microsoft is far more concerned about what does your game, how does your game react to your controller disconnecting Mm -hmm. than Sony is? Right. I'm not even sure if Sony checks for that. Okay. But, um, so one of the bits of feedback that I got from Microsoft is this year we're really focusing on controller disconnects Mm -hmm. and we want to make sure that all the titles follow a proper procedure Mm -hmm. for dealing with controller disconnects. Um, so that resulted in me going back and spending two weeks rewriting a bunch of code and changing screens and doing all kinds of stuff behind mm-hmm. the scenes that a game player will never, ever see, yeah. shouldn't, um, to accommodate those requirements. Right. But I didn't have to do that for Sony. Mm-hmm. Uh, Sony, they wanted uh, me to focus on corrupted files. How did your game deal with a corrupted save file? Mm-hmm. Okay, so that's something that Microsoft doesn't focus on. Right. So each has their own things that they focus on, mm-hmm. and each drives work that is completely unrelated to the other. Okay. But because it's one code base and it's mm-hmm. one stream of code, you've got to make sure that if you're fixing, if you're if you're if you're writing code that accounts for corrupted files on a PS4, it doesn't break something on the Xbox. Yeah. So, I, I, I was going to ask, too, since it's a multi-platform yes. game now, um, is it something when you get a chain from one, you're like, well, I should probably include it in the other as well? Sometimes it happens by default. Mm-hmm. Um, yeah, sometimes it happens by default. I mean, now on the Xbox, uh, it will deal with uh, insufficient disk space more or less the same way that Sony's insufficient disk space is dealt with. Okay. Um, it's just, you know, just by default, that sort of happened. Um, and uh, the flip side is now if your controller disconnects on the PS4, it's dealt with the same, more or less the same way as the Xbox deals with it. So they, they get the benefits of each other when you're doing that sort of work to accommodate specific uh, focuses. Um, you just have to make sure that you're not introducing a bug to the other one. Right. Um, because for example, the APIs for testing for disk space on the Xbox are not the same Mm -hmm. as Sony. So you can't just write Sony stuff and expect it to work on the Xbox. You have to account for both. So it's really more of a case of 
if you're writing code to accommodate a request from one platform, you're not breaking something on the other. Right, right. And uh, I, uh, in a recent video, you also explained uh, that uh, you were in, touch with, in talks with Nintendo about yes. potentially getting the game on the Switch. Yeah. Um, is there anything you could talk about about that? Uh, they're still evaluating the proposal. Okay. That's gotcha. kind of where it is. Okay. And they will get back to me when they get back to me. Because on, <laughs> I don't, on, I don't have an answer beyond that. Yeah. Because honestly, <laughs> I don't have a switch yet, but I mean, it's, I, I just turned 30, so yeah. I've got some mo extra money. So I'm thinking of getting one, being able to play this on the go would be amazing. And if there's a way that we could connect multiple switches together to have multiplayer play, that would be really cool. Yeah. Actually. So the game is multiplayer, mm -hmm. just a uh, hot seat. So it's the okay. same console. Uh, gotcha. I haven't done anything online related with maximum football yet. Mm -hmm. And the reason for that is going back to my time at EA as the producer for Sports Online, mm -hmm. uh, I am very well versed in what it takes to get a sports game online. Right. And it is as much effort as it is to actually build just the core game. Yeah. And then, of course, you've got the expenses of servers and, and SSLs and all yeah. these other things. So uh, you need a data center. Right. Which actually the innovation cluster has a data center, wow. so that's okay. not that big of a deal, mm -hmm. but it's still a it's still a gigantic chunk of effort to make that online. Right. So um, that's probably coming in the future. Mm -hmm. So so uh, what I was more so referring to is uh, on the Switch, like for example, NBA has it. You can have two Switch consoles and play a multiplayer game together. Yeah. Is that something like? If it gets on the Switch that you're considering, or... I'd have to get the Switch platform first mm -hmm. and, and see... I'd have to s s do a basic port right. at, to, to make those sorts of evaluations and decisions. I am not even sure yet if the game will run on a Switch. Right, right. Uh, I don't know what kind of performance I'm going to get mm -hmm. on that platform. Yeah. So that's the priority right now, mm -hmm. is to get through the evaluation process mm -hmm. if they see value in what I'm proposing then uh, you have to buy your own hardware. You have right. to buy your own dev kits. That's um, going back to a previous question you had mm -hmm. about, you know, relationships. Mm -hmm. uh, Microsoft actually paid for the development kits. Oh, really? They supplied those at their cost okay. to help Canuck Play get started. Okay. Sony was, no, we don't do anything like that. You buy your own stuff. Okay. So... In terms of helping us get started, I mean, Microsoft was there to give us a good and, push. And that's and that and I assume that's why uh, Canadian Football 2017 was Xbox, Xbox and PC exclusive. Yeah. Okay, yeah. yeah. Um, um, are you uh, are you excited about the prospect of possibly putting the game on the Switch? Or yeah, I mean, I'm 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 happy to put it on whatever platform there is enough people that are mm -hmm. interested in it. Uh, that that's basically the answer. To that and and Switch is, I th think it's in canada i think it's number three i haven't looked at the metrics yeah. lately but it's two or three it's it's getting yeah, on, up there yeah. like it's it's definitely faster growing than the wii u was yes but, yes uh, yeah um, i actually um i spent some time at warner brothers uh, a few years ago and and i worked uh briefly on the uh batman arkham city oh, port okay. to wii u so i am a little bit familiar with the wii u platform and know where its deficiencies were yeah. are and um yeah i think the switch is getting i, th I think the switch solved a lot of those problems mm -hmm. and it's getting some things right this time around yeah so. but i i still i i have to do an evaluation of how does the game perform on that platform yeah okay um so i'm gonna throw you with another uh football related question here just to mix it up a bit Sure. Um, so several improvements to the player AI at various positions have been mentioned for this game. What would you say is the most significant AI improvement? The quarterback's choice of receiver. Okay. Um, and so, well, I'm going to go with a, I'm going to, I'm going to cop out here. I'm going to go with one A and one B. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> and so I'm going to say one A is the quarterback's choice of receiver, how mm -hmm. he selects what receiver to throw to. Mm -hmm. And one B is the defensive back coverage of that receiver. Okay, I think is dramatically improved. So, and uh, you also mentioned earlier on that uh, it's less likely in this game for characters to get stuck on each other or anything like that. Yeah, it's less like it, it's not it's not something you can make impossible because football is a contact sport, and certainly when you get in the offensive line and you get that that mash of players all in a big clump around the quarterback and and things you're. And if you are a running back 
and you're trying to run through a hole that is not big enough for the for the running bad to get through, mm-hmm. he's going to get stuck, and you're going to have to try and get around that. Uh, but that happens in real life. I mean, mm-hmm. if the space for running back is too small for him to fit, he's got to find another hole to, to go through. Yeah. Um, so, you know, that sort of thing is is certainly been reduced. I think where you will see it the most is receivers running crossing patterns. Um, they it, they won't they won't crash into each other and get stuck. They will properly run past each other this mm-hmm. time. So I think that's where you'll see the improvement. Okay. But certainly when you get a big mash of players in a clump, I mean, they're going to bump into each other. And another thing I want to ask is, it's uh, in any sports, the play doesn't always go the way it's supposed to. Yeah. Um, so um, it, say the player decides split second they have to make a change during the play. How quick is the AI to react to that? Or are they still set on, this is the play, this is the way we're going to go? Well, I, I'm... I, there's a bunch of different ways I can answer that. Mm-hmm. Um, receiver routes, unless you change, unless you call an audible and mm-hmm. change the routes, or you give one player a hot route, the receivers will run the routes they're told to run. Um, and some of the routes end in a scramble um, function. So the receiver will get to, say he's running a, an out pattern, and he gets to the, gets to the sideline, and instead of just standing there and waiting, he mm-hmm. will start to move around a little bit and try to keep the defender behind him. Right. So there's a little bit of the scrambling, try to maintain a good position. Um, so there's AI for that. And if the uh, if the player, if the user player uh, decides to not throw the ball and scramble and run off with it. Right then the defense will react and all players on the field have various skill sets, player ratings. I think there's 13 of them this year. And one of them is, uh, is, uh, is awareness intelligence. Actually, I call it intelligence yeah. and it, it uh, impacts how quickly they react to that sort of thing. Okay. So if a lineman, pardon me, if a linebacker is covering a receiver that's running a crossing pattern and the quarterback decides to take off and run well that linebacker's reaction time is based on that rating right and it's it's fractions of a second uh because you know you the the linebacker is looking at two things at the same time um so it is fractions of a second but it is still enough to impact the play i mean it could be one it could be 0.15 of a second difference between following and reacting but that 0.15 of a second is enough to give you an extra yard. Right. Right. So it is, they do, they do react to what you're doing okay. to a degree. Okay. Gotcha. But it's, it's different based on each player just because of the different yeah. stats and what. Yeah. Okay. I don't know if that answers the question, but. Oh yeah. Yeah. That kind of <laughs> answers the question there. Sure. Cause that's something I've always wondered about. Like if I, in, when I play any kind of, if I make a play and then I change my mind mid play, cause this, is it working? Like how fast is, uh, are the fear control characters going to react to what I'm doing? Yeah. So. Well, as far as the receivers, they will run the route they're told to run. Mm-hmm. Um, you, if you, if the play is a handoff or pitch out or something like that, uh, you don't get control of the ball carrier until that part is completed. So you couldn't abort a pitch out and throw the ball. Uh, you couldn't anyway, because your blocking is, not correct Mm -hmm. it would be an illegal pass because Mm -hmm. the blocking isn't the right kind of blocking um but uh so there are some limitations but i think generally if you start making stuff up as you go to the degree you can in a football game uh the defense reacts pretty well right okay um and just another question for you from uh our one of our members is uh how do you decide which Canadian or U.S. cities to include for each league? I only ask because the the U.S. league is sixteen teams, and the NFL has thirty two teams. Well, I pick sixteen because thirty two just becomes unwieldy to manage. Mm-hmm. Uh, it's just it's just a lot. Yeah. Um. You know, you're to try and simulate out a league there for a week. You know. Um. And as far as the as far as the the ten Canadian cities, well, it's it's. The nine team, it's the nine cities that have pro teams now, plus Halifax, mm-hmm. um, because 
they should already have a team. Right. <laughs> and as far as the 16 U.S. teams, they were, in fact, the 16 teams that were in Maximum Football 05. Yeah. Um, with different logos. Mm -hmm. So that's where they came from. Yeah. I'm glad you mentioned Halifax. There's a second part of this question. Um, the Halifax Mariners are mentioned as a new team for the game. How much inspiration, if any, is drawn from Halifax attempts to get a CFL team like with Atlantic Sh Schooners? 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 Schooners. Yeah. Schooners uh, mm -hmm. was the name of my high school team in my oh. bag. Ah, oh, okay. Um, so, yeah, it's funny how that worked out. Anyway, um, I don't know if it's impacted too much because the Halifax Mariners existed in maximum football since 05. Um, they didn't get into Canadian football 17 because it was really the, the, the impetus around that game had was completely different than what I'm trying to do this year. Yeah. Um, so when, when I finally made the decision to cut the cord and just do my own thing, Halifax got put back in. Yeah. So the Halifax Mariners have existed since 05 in this branding of title. Yeah. Okay. Uh, the stadium selection, I based the location of the stadium in Halifax. When, when you're in this, the Halifax stadium and the camera's panning around and you can see out big windows and stuff, you can mm -hmm. see the, the area skyline out, out the back of the windows and stuff. Um, and I positioned that skyline based on a proposal for the stadium location from about 15 years ago. Right. So. I don't know if it's a, if I don't know if it's one of the two locations they're talking about now. I kind of lost track, but uh, 15 years ago it was one of the proposed locations for a stadium. Oh, okay. So it's right. Uh, it as you're playing the game, if the camera looks out the back of one of the end zones, you'll actually see the navy yards cross the bay. Okay. So yeah. Okay. And I did actually uh, want to ask you uh, another game development question. Um, uh, what, uh, how's game development changed in the last 10 years? Just from oh, your it's, there's so many different focuses now. Mm -hmm. um, I think in the past 10 years, game development has changed dramatically because of commercial game engines. Mm -hmm. Uh, when I was doing Maximum Football 05, and I, I know we kind of joked about this a little bit, yeah. uh, Unity didn't exist. In fact, um, the very first edition of Unity, Unity 1.0, was released to the public the day after <laughs> Maximum Football 05 was released. <laughs> so it wasn't available to me mm -hmm. for development. Uh, the Unreal Engine existed at the time, but it had a per seat licensing in the hundreds of thousands of dollars. Mm -hmm. So it didn't exist to me at the time either. So when I wrote Maximum Football 05 and 07, excuse me, I was writing pure DirectX code, right? Okay. Low level API. I had to build my own game engine first. Mm -hmm. And then once I had the game engine and the graphics engine and I could draw things to the screen, I had to build the football game engine on top of that. Mm. And so I'm, these are two pretty massive projects being done by one guy in his basement yeah. at the time. And it kind of showed in the terms, when you look at the old 05 graphics, they're, I mean, they're being blown away by mobile games now. Mm. They're, they just weren't very good. Yeah. But, um, you know, uh, there was, that I think is the biggest difference. Now that you've got engines like Unity and Unreal and, and other engines out there, um, that has removed or at least reduced the amount of work you have to spend on simply trying to get a picture to a screen. Um, you can draw a scene, you can draw a cube to the screen on Unity in two mouse clicks and about three and a half minutes. Yeah. It's instantaneous. But to do that back in 2005, that took a whole day right. of writing low-level code and debugging and, and all this stuff to just draw a cube with no texture, just a cube to the screen. Right. Um, so it's the biggest difference is, I think, the commercial game engines. Yeah. And uh, I think it's the barrier to entry is lower now. 
Well, um, it, yes, a yeah. lot lower because I you mean, don't have to know DirectX API. Yeah. You don't have to write code to make a game. Exactly. I was just going to mention, you know, like when I was in high school and in college, like back probably when you were making maximum, the original Maximum Football, I was making games in RPG Maker. Mm -hmm. And, you know, I was learning. Which I was like that. I, stuff. I thought RPG Maker I, was great. <laughs> I've actually like, because of Unity and stuff, I've had a few ideas for games, but it's just usually time and money are usually the main factors. Like there's an RPG Maker game I thought of making because I have a lot of experience with it. But um, the problem is hiring artists and hiring uh, musicians and stuff like that. And that's, like, uh, they can't do it for free. Obviously. That's, the, that's the biggest thing I think now is that because game engines have... Uh, and I, I'm, I know there are other game engines, but I keep picking on Unity and Unreal mm -hmm. because those are the two biggest. Um, that has really um, opened up the, the field of game development to people that concentrate on art. Mm -hmm. uh, with Unity, you can literally make a game without writing a piece of code. And... For artists, 3D modelers, texture artists, 2D artists, that sort of thing, that opens up to them because now they don't need a software developer. Mm -hmm. But I am first and foremost a software developer. Yeah. I write code mm -hmm. um, and I, I art because I have to. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. um, and, and for me, the challenge is, well, I've, I've got this wonderful API and and... It, it, the Unity and Unreal are capable of drawing these really great pictures, but now you need to find the artists yeah. to actually do that. So, the the um, the shift in in people that make up a team has kind of shifted from pure coders on this end of the spectrum. It's kind of shifted the spectrum to being more art people and mm -hmm. fewer coders. Yeah, and and one other thing, like I, like I was even like just looking up and like there's a lot of you know first person horror games. In the yes. What if I wanted to make one? And I looked and they're like you can even just like people just put their like um, their uh, their templates out there and yes. they're just like you can use this to yes. make a game sort of thing. So it's it's really interesting. So if I you know you know if I ended up getting more time, I could just sit down and start working on a game yeah. and not have to worry about you know is my you know do I need to brush up on my C sharp. Do I need to brush up on my code because it's been a while for me? Yeah. Um, no, uh, Unity. Really Unity has really good templates and and uh, uh, getting starter kits for just about every type of game you can think of, except maybe a football game. Mm -hmm. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> so if you want to if you want to rapidly prototype a first person shooter, or if you want to rapidly prototype an RTS. Mm -hmm. Unity will let you do that, and mm -hmm. you can have a game up and running in, you know, less than a weekend. Right, right. And um, one other thing I wanted to ask is, uh, uh, is there anything else in the pipeline other than just football games? Like, is there anything else you've either thought of developing or producing another developer with? Or? Yeah, so one of the things that I'd like to do, uh, is what I've been actively trying to do is, is finding a business partner to join up with. Um, a good business. Every single good business is made up of multiple people that have expertise in multiple mm -hmm. areas. And I'm the tech guy. I, yeah. do, I do the technology side of things. What I don't have the strong skill sets for is the business relations mm -hmm. and the sales and, and that end of things. I need yeah. to find a business partner that can do that. Mm -hmm. and, and between the two of us, we'd probably make something pretty cool. Yeah. Um, but in terms of, of the next titles, um, there are a couple of projects that I've sort of got in the back of my mm -hmm. mind. Um, my, my wife is a, uh, is an author mm -hmm. and she's got lots of stories that she's written and, and, and things that I think would make good stories for games. Um, and so we're looking at that. One of Canuck's mandates or mantras, I mm -hmm. suppose, is Canadian stories. Mm -hmm. and Canada's, uh, Canada has a very rich history to draw on when it comes to topics for games. Mm -hmm. um, you know, obviously we've got our big military history. I mean, we've got one of the oldest air forces in the world and, and uh, our contributions to both world wars. There's a lot of opportunity there for, for games. Yeah. I personally would love, I don't mean to judge it, but I personally would love to see like a battlefield or something that focuses on the Canadian side because we... We have a lot more time in the war than the Americans. Yes. Have. So yeah. and and 
D-Day wasn't just the United States. Mm -hmm. uh, we were there too. <laughs> and what a few people realize is that uh, the Canadian troops, once they landed in Juneau, progressed mm -hmm. farther inland than any other division mm -hmm. for any other country. Mm -hmm. uh, so, yeah, we made the most headway on, on, in June. So, um, you know, there's, there's a tremendous amount of opportunity there for, for Canadian military stuff. But even outside of that, I mean, you look at, a, a, you know, you look at something like, even something simple, like a real-time strategy game that is based on the Vikings' arrival in Newfoundland. I mean, you know, we were there 500 years before Columbus finally showed up. Yeah. <laughs> so, you know, why not? You know, there's exactly. something like that. So, I mean, with especially with the popularity now of those type of games. Yes. Like, I mean, even if it was something like a tactical game, like Fire Emblem's huge, for example. You should make yeah. a Canadian Fire Emblem. Yeah, yeah. There's, <laughs> like there's a yeah. lot of opportunity there for, yeah. for Canadian content. Mm -hmm. uh, JTF2. I mean, lots of people, uh, lots of Canadians don't even know what JTF2 is, but JTF2, uh, there's, that's a premier, premio uh, commando unit, mm -hmm. and they do some pretty wacky stuff. So there's, a, there's an opportunity for that sort yeah, of thing. It's, it sounds familiar to me. Like, yeah, I've heard that JTF2 before. has been around for a while, and, and they're Canada's commando team. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Okay. Um, so another thing I want to ask about the game is, uh, is um, is June thirty first? Is that the release date for yes. the game? Okay. Have you already sent review copies out to? I have. Versions? I have keys, but I've not sent anything okay. out yet. That's okay. Probably... So, right, is your plan to send it to major publications, and then also maybe like YouTube reviewers or? Yeah, uh, <laughs> sort of. That's going on a case by case. Okay. You know, um, I get a lot of requests for reviews, and where possible, I do look at who is asking for those things, mm -hmm. and. Some channels I just don't yeah. send them to. I mean, if they've got, if they're, if they're in China and they've got three people subscribed to their channel, mm -hmm. I, yeah. they're probably not going to get a key because they don't know the sport anyway and mm -hmm. they've got three people. But, uh, you know, some of the larger ones certainly I look at. Yeah. yeah. But it's all case by case. Because mm -hmm. I like, even somebody with a uh, size of my channel, like I only have like around the 2,000 subscriber yeah. range. I get offers all the time that's, for weird stuff. That's, that's so. more than Canuck has on YouTube. I think we're sitting <laughs> yeah. at around 230, 240 people. Yeah. So not really very big. Yeah. Uh, we hit a bit of a small milestone in Twitter the other day. We hit 1,000 followers. So, you know, <laughs> Katy Perry better watch out because we're catching up pretty quick. <laughs> and um, yeah, so, you know, in terms of, of gaming studios, you know, you look at, at other studios out there and they got tens of thousands of followers and mm -hmm. certainly you'd like to be up there, but we're just getting started and we've only got the one game out and we're a small group and we don't spend mm -hmm. a lot of marketing. So a thousand people organically grown, I think is not a bad little milestone. Yeah, it's, I remember specifically there was a... Um... I had talked in a video about how I was a big fan of Paper Mario and I kind of wish it would go back to its roots. It was something like offshoot. Um, there's somebody developing a Paper Mario style RPG who approached me. He's like, will you do a, because we do a series on River City Gamers called Alpha Ad, where we talk about early access games, betas, alphas, demos, mm -hmm. stuff like that. And he had saw that and he's like, hey, I have a free alpha of this. Do you want to do a video on it? Because I'm going to be launching a Kickstarter. So we did. I, unfortunately, the Kickstarter didn't go through, but he's reorganizing right. it doing it so but that got him a little more attention yeah on the game that he was working on so um i like i'm always curious because i know that youtube is a, a bigger market now so uh i was just wondering like if that's something that you've been working on yeah i mean one of the reasons we've only got canuck only has 240 ish mm -hmm. something i don't remember something around there mm -hmm. followers is oh well, we've got a grand total of 12 minutes of video <laughs> up there <laughs> yeah so it's not like you know it's not like there's a lot of of content for people mm -hmm. to to subscribe to so you know it's kind of all relative but getting more content up there mm -hmm. i've started to try and do weekly blogs mm -hmm. i during the development of canadian football 17 and the earlier development of maximum football 18 mm -hmm. i did um sort of bi-weekly blogs but they were written and what i discovered was few people actually read that yeah you know some of these some of these blogs were were multiple page dissertations i mean yeah. it was like i was writing it for a phd or something mm -hmm. they were just too long yeah. and nobody really wanted to read that it was a lot of technical jargon and stuff in there so 
um, uh, I decided that I'll try to do the video blog mm -hmm. thing, and that seems to have gone over better. Some of my videos are probably too long, you know, they get upwards of 30 minutes. Some of them are two see, minutes. See, so. you're, see, the videos are perfect because I've been, um, to get through most of them, just to, so I, to be prepared for this, is I used, um, a lot of the times when I'm working on publishing my own videos, because I do two Let's Play videos a day, and then on top of that, other reviews and whatnot. So um, I have to be focused on, you know, getting, make sure the title's right, the tags are right, you know, it's being posted to this site, to this site. Um, so I usually have like a podcast from me in the background and then I'm like, well, you've got all these videos that are like eight minutes. I'm like, that's perfect. That's as much time as I need mm. so I can have it on the other monitor and also work on other things at the same time, but still retain the information that you're talking about. And so that's really helped when I was getting prepared for this, because I'm going to be honest, when I came into it, I didn't know a lot about the game. So sure. I wanted to research it more. I had heard about Canadian football 2017 because of retros and stuff right. like that. Yeah. And, um, but the more, the more I dived into it, I think the video blog idea was a good idea because um you're, you're going over things that probably i wouldn't even think of to ask about until you know unless i was playing the game sort of thing so i think it's great that you update because a lot of developers don't they'll say our game's coming out uh sometime here mm -hmm. and uh we'll maybe give you an update once unless it's a kickstarter or something yeah kickstarter so one of the I'll, I'll answer a question you haven't mm -hmm. asked yet uh one of the reasons that i didn't do a kickstarter mm -hmm. is um, a Kickstarter to get it successful is a full-time job. Yeah. And, and I know that there are other, uh, groups out there that, uh, ha for, for various games have spent all of their time and money and resources getting a Kickstarter up and running mm -hmm. and they really don't have much to show in terms of actual, what can you produce? I mean, it's it's not hard to put up a Kickstarter. Mm -hmm. It's hard to actually produce what you're saying yeah. you're going to kickstart. Yeah. And yeah. for me, I think it would time better spent to actually build the game than do Kickstarter. Yeah, there was actually because um, I, I don't. I'm sure you probably heard of it. Like the whole fiasco with Mighty Number no. Nine's Kickstarter is that they did it. Um, they had the backing of you know the original creator of the Mega Man series make his own company. Then they had to make another Kickstarter because they didn't have enough money, mm -hmm. even though they made four or five times their goal yeah um but then there's stuff like there's a uh youtuber called uh he goes by the apic guy he made a game called oh yeah i know planet uh, X, uh, yeah, planet david X, david, uh, david murray david murray yeah. yeah his kickstarter was very successful yes. but he made it really low-key because he's like you know planet x2 sold so much and then people just kept asking for it and i had to order a certain amount from the manufacturer so he ended and up he's also over. doing a commodore 64 game so yeah it's it's a it's a much smaller mm -hmm. market. Yeah. And I don't know what his Kickstarter goal was. I well, missed that whole thing. I mean, I knew he was doing mm -hmm. it, but I wasn't paying yeah. close enough attention to know what his goal mm -hmm. was. Well, uh, I, I know that um, like Planet X3 is the, the sequel the for it is going to be DOS. Yeah. So, of course, there's a bigger market yes. for it. Um, but, he, but, of course, when you're making a Commodore 64 or a VIC-20 game, it's going to be a smaller base of people. There is a much that. smaller base of people, yeah. <laughs> so he didn't know, anticipate, like, what ha he didn't know how many people are going to want this because you can get it on DOSBox. Yeah. So um, I think he was surprised by the amount of people who Yeah, the well, game, so. you know, it would be like if I came out and I did a new Atari 2600 game. Mm -hmm. You know, exactly. I, there's, there, would be, there would be people that buy it just because, mm -hmm. oh, my God, it's a new Atari 2600 yeah. game. And, yeah. and and I'm uh, I'm a sucker for that because um, uh, another popular YouTuber, Game Straight, he won his game company, and he released a game called uh, um, oh, it's the name's escaping me. But they released they were making a Super Nintendo version, and they were kickstarting it. So I, as a sucker, I paid right for that yeah. and ended up I got it, but it's just uh, I was just like now I've got to find time to play this game. <laughs> yeah, but uh, it's just the not I guess part of that is the novelty. It's a new Super Nintendo yeah. game, but. Uh, but yeah, I mean, it's, 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 there's more than meets the eye, definitely, with Kickstarter or Indiegogo or any of those. Yeah. So, um, especially like the more people are going towards Indiegogo because you don't need a, uh, like, you know, a prototype, mm -hmm. which is good and bad because yeah. there's a lot of things on there that don't have prototypes that will never get anywhere. But, and I don't, you might be able to tell me this because I haven't looked in a while. Okay. But the last time I looked at actual Kickstarter, it wasn't available in Canada. You couldn't do Canadian stuff. Is I think that still can. the case? I think you can now, um, but because, uh, I mean, you can do it in Japan, you can do it in 
yeah. U.S. You but I know the that. last time I looked at it, which was five years ago, mm -hmm. uh, and I actually went to Kickstarter.com and went through mm -hmm. the requirements, it was not in Canada, and I had to use something else. I think that's changed. I'll have to double check. I know Indiegogo is. Yeah. Um, but uh, Kickstarter, yeah, I'll have to double check that yeah. one. I, I would assume it is now because, I mean, we, we, have, we have Ubisoft and we have, you know, bunch of other developers that are coming up. Yeah. You. Yeah. <laughs> so they want to give them a way to do crowdfunding. Not yeah. that Ubisoft would need to do crowdfunding. No, but, and they're, they would be technically using the American one anyway. Yeah, so. that's true. Um, so, yeah. Um, I also uh, wanted to ask you another question about this. Hold on. <laughs> Just lost my place here. Okay. Um, what I wanted to ask you as well is, in your experience thus far, um, what are your thoughts on the environment for football games outside of the Madden series? Um, you mean how are they received by the players? Well, what I, what what more we're just uh, saying is like, do you think there? Where do you think it lies? Uh, the non Madden football game in the market. Do you think it's something that you know people are going to go towards because they're tired of Madden or? Well, I think. Sense? I think it comes down to a couple of things. Does the game offer enough of a difference? And is the price point right? Mm -hmm. um, and I think Maxim Football hits both of those. Um, we offer, we don't have the slick glitz and glamour of, of an NFL title with $20 million budget or mm -hmm. $40 million or whatever they're using right now. Right. Um, you know, there's not 120 people working on it. But it does provide things that they don't offer, like different rule sets, customization, that sort of thing, mm -hmm. simplified gameplay. You know, you're, one of the things that I've, I've been striving to do with Max and Football is not make the control scheme so overwhelming that you cannot possibly play it. Right. One of the big things that I hear from people that pick up Madden for the first time as well the, there are so many controls that I don't even know what button to press. Yeah. Right. Um, I've I've consciously tried to simplify the control scheme so yeah. a more novice player can have some level of success. And but at the same time, this is a fifteen dollar US. Mm -hmm. game. It's not ninety. Yeah. So the price point is very different. Yeah, and that's that's good because a lot of the times I'll play a game and you know we have to have our sixteen button mega controllers yeah. now. And you can put buttons on the back now and everything. Um, a lot of the times I'll get a game and it's like, it wants me to do something. And I'm like, okay, what button do I press? Yeah. Like, and you try everything and sometimes you'll get it and whatnot. So. And it's funny, people, uh, people that ask me about the control schemes for Maxim Football, um, one of the things that I keep having to remind people is that Maxim Football plays Canadian rules, mm -hmm. which is 12 men aside. So you've got six receiver sets. So you've got a different button layout just to accommodate all the receivers. Yeah. You cannot use the same button layout as say NFL 2K5 because they could only ever have five receiver sets. Right. Well, I got an extra receiver, so I need that button that you're probably using for something else. Mm -hmm. So that changes the button layouts. Um, and, you know, there's sort of been a evolution of how the buttons work. Uh, and I've tried to, with maximum football, I've tried to get a little bit closer to what, to what the the um, more uh, seasoned football gamer is used to. But at the same time, I still have those sorts of of considerations to take into account. Like it is, it is a different game, so. right? Exactly. Um, and uh, I think now I'm going to move on to the Twitter questions. Sure, uh, yeah, we got a few of those. Um, first off, we've got Joshua Sire who says who asks. Uh, what's the projected number of sales? And also, will you guys be submitting copy reviewer copies to IGN and GameSpot? I kind of already asked you that, but is that something that you're considering as well? Or? Yes, we're looking at that. Yeah. Yeah. And what's the, what about for projected number of sales? What do you think it's going to be? Um, well, I'm not going to get into specifics, mm -hmm. but I think we should... The simple fact that we are now on two platforms, two mm -hmm. console platforms, as opposed to one console platform mm -hmm. last year... I mean, our numbers will be at minimum double what we had last year. Right. Uh, PC sales are always lower than console because PC sports title. 
Yeah, it just, exactly. It just is what it is, and mm -hmm. they don't get, generate the same numbers as a console does. Exactly. Um, so, uh, I have kind of a, just the, this is just a um, uh, sillier question. Yeah. Looking for any voice talent? <laughs> Always. <laughs> uh, so, I, there, is, there is local voice talent in, <laughs> in the game. Okay. Um, so because I heard a lot of the same grunts and groans. Like, oh, oh no, uh, okay. I can do a few of those. So all of those have been replaced. Yeah, yeah, the grunts. When you play the game after the fact, after we're done here, you, we'll set you up in the games room. Yeah. And you can play the game. All of the sound effects for Maximum Football 18 are different from uh, 18. Mm -hmm. And in fact, they're different from even some of the earlier videos that you may have seen of Maximum Football that have, on the YouTube channel. Okay. Um, and we, I do try to use as much local talent as I can because I am actively trying to grow the digital media space here in Peterborough. You know, you look down the highway at Waterloo and you see all those tech companies and you look up the road to Montreal and you see all those game companies. Well, we could do that here. Yeah. We could absolutely do that here. Why yeah. not? You just do it. Mm -hmm. So trying to get people involved with art uh, artists, uh, local artists. Uh, I'm using a. Um, I'm getting some animation help from a from an artist in Trenton, Ontario, which oh. is about for those people that don't know, it's about 40 minutes away ish. Mm -hmm. uh, it's a big airbase there. Yeah. And um, uh, as far as the voice talent, the the stadium announcer, the stadium PA announcer that you hear in the background is Jordan Mercier, who is a local radio talent. He oh, does okay. the local sports radio here. Uh, our our in-game referee who calls penalties and does the coin toss. He's a football fan by the name of Bill Juby, okay. and um, the um, we have a lo we're using local voice talent for our new quarterback noises and that sort of thing. Um, one of the things that because this is not a licensed title. Mm -hmm. It does open up a few extra little avenues mm -hmm. that you can do things that you. A license might prohibit you from. Uh, so coming soon, um, I am hoping to make one of the referees female. I want to. I want to put uh, a woman in the, the calling the the, the referee yeah. for a couple of the games, uh, just because there are female referees calling football games, mm -hmm. and there's no reason why they can't be in the game. Exactly. So um, I was asked that question by a young lady. Uh, when we did the launch last year, she said, well, I'm a referee. I do local sports, so why can't? And I thought about it, and I couldn't come up with a good answer for no. Mm -hmm. So, yes, we're going to yeah. try and do that. <laughs> yeah, that's, that's really cool because, yeah, it's, uh, it's more common than people think. Yes. Um, just that when, we're, when it's broadcast, we're always seeing just, you know, just the guys. and yeah. stuff. Um, and, yeah, because I do, like, myself and some of the members of our site do voice talent from time to time, so if you need some stuff we're always happy to sure put hand yeah. in. i mean i probably wouldn't be any better than a, a coach getting angry or something well uh, yeah <laughs> coaches i'm gonna need angry coaches at some point yeah <laughs> um but yeah so um that's basically it for the questions that i have but i wanted to uh also uh throw it over to you um because obviously the game's coming out um and is there anything else you want to promote though or is uh well uh, i just ask about? i just ask that uh everybody uh listening or watching uh mm -hmm. gives us a follow on twitter it's mm -hmm. uh at canuck gs mm -hmm. golf sierra mm -hmm. um it's a little twitter squatters yeah um so it's it's uh, canuck gs and on Facebook, it is facebook.com Canuck Play. And on YouTube, it's youtube.com slash Canuck Play. So give us a follow or a subscription on that. Look for the game on the 31st of July. It's going to be uh, $16 US. So uh, exchange rate, I think that's about $20, $21 is, Canadian. Is, is, that, is that digital and physical? No, where it's, it's digital only. Uh, I did look at doing a physical run and just didn't seem to be working out so it's digital download and i think that works out for the consumer anyway yeah because as soon as now these boxes you're seeing these boxes mm -hmm. here these are just mock-ups that i've done mm -hmm. for this sort of thing mm -hmm. um as soon as you take a, 
a game and you put it on a plastic disc and you put it on a shelf at mm-hmm. EB Games, mm-hmm. you're taking a fifteen or twenty dollar game and you're turning it into a into a ninety dollar game. Yeah, because the publisher wants a cut, mm-hmm. the distributor wants a cut, the store wants a cut, yeah. the store has to pay their employees. Blah blah blah. There's a whole bunch yeah. of extra costs get tacked on. There, there actually is a company. I don't know if you heard of them. Limited Run Games. Yes, I spoke the to them. Thing. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. They, Easy. they're, they're not keen on sports titles. Yeah, I mean, they're just, they're just starting to like make you know take Japanese games and translate them too. Yeah. So, um, you know, maybe in the future they'll expand a little more there. Yeah. But, uh, but I, I did speak to Limited mm-hmm. Run, and I spoke to one other sort of similar mm-hmm. thing, and uh, both was well. They're sports games, so yeah. Okay, actually, one of the questions I had sure. was: um, Is there a uh, are there going to be looking towards DLC for the game in the future, or is it basically? I think DLC will come when the game is online. Okay, uh, DLC will make more sense when we're connecting to a data center and we've got accounts that we own and that sort of thing. Uh, DLC right now. Um, you know, at some point there'll be there'll be playbooks like just download more playbooks. Um, but even that would be free DLC. Yeah. Uh, and uh, I think I think once the game is online and you start getting that online head to head, you might see some more actual DLC cool. at that point. Yeah. Okay, gotcha. And the PC release is it coming out the same day? Or no, the later? PC release is going to be coming a little later in the year. Yeah. Uh, the reason for that is the PC has additional features like mm. the play designer, right? Uh, but it also has um, slightly different APIs to accommodate game controllers and that sort of thing. Um, I have not yet settled on whether or not I'm going to go back to Steam, um, and that's more of a um, business decision than anything else. Uh, so it might be self distribution or might go through digital river or something oh, like that okay. but steam uh steam i may not go back to a- any chance it might show up on the microsoft store for a PC? possibly yeah okay. yeah that also makes sense yeah. Yeah. i mean you're already working with them on already the working with them so. the game's already certified to work yeah. on those platforms so okay. yeah it it makes sense and uh one more question what uh what is the chance of it being available for the i can't remember what it's called xbox play anywhere where you can i guess play on PC or Xbox? Yeah, that's a little bit different. I okay. think you have to be selling through the Xbox store mm-hmm. for that to work. So if we go through the Xbox store, right. that, that probably works. Yeah. Okay, gotcha. All right, well, that's about it. Thanks again for having us here. Um, and guys, if you want to keep up to date with the podcast, uh, you can go to my review channel, Zero Master Reviews. I'm on Twitter, at Zero Master. Uh, and of course, I stream Twitch every Thir- Tuesday and Thursday at 11 o'clock Eastern uh, on Twitch at Zero Master LP. Um, and uh, you can download the podcast if you're not if you don't like the video version. You can download the podcast on Shout Engine. Hopefully, coming to iTunes if they ever verify me. <laughs> <laughs> um, and uh, yeah, and if you guys want to see some gameplay of Maximum Football uh, 2018, it's going to be on my game playing channel Zero Master LP. So keep an eye for that. Uh, anyways. Thanks again. Yeah, thank and, you very much. Uh, uh, here's hoping that it's a strong launch that you yeah. get a lot of uh, back. I'm, I'm, I think, I think people will be really surprised. Certainly, uh, the folks that played Canadian Football 17 last year, and they look at the differences that are coming this year. I think the new features and the improvements and the graphical changes and the gameplay changes. It is, it is just about a completely different game. So yeah. All right. Well, I'm looking forward to it. So. Uh, Anyways, guys, thanks again for watching another Hunter-based podcast, and we'll see you on the next one. Thanks a lot.